Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So it's been a big day today. Today is February the 1st, and today was supposed to be the day that XRP was going to pump to the moon. Uh, right now I'm taking a look at the XRP chart, and uh, you know, although we did see some buying pressure, ultimately the bears have taken over. Right now XRP is trading at 45 cents, and uh, this morning when I woke up, XRP was trading at 75 cents, so significant selling pressure down here. I don't think people got the memo. You were supposed to buy and hold XRP. Nevertheless, it is an interesting movement, and I'm wondering if there's something else behind this. This from XRP Crypto Wolf. Uh, XRP posted its biggest single day gain in three years in a coordinated Wall Street bets buying. Traditional crypto pump groups are being copied and legitimized by Wall Street bets style crowd pumps and are now turning their burning gaze from Dogecoin to XRP. So this article uh, a little bit out of date right now, but it is still pertinent. And I'm going to tell you why. So XRP rallied hard on Saturday in a move similar to a crowd pump recently observed in out of favor stocks such as Game stop. The cryptocurrency jumped 56% to almost 51 cents to hit the highest level since December 22nd. This is important because this is where we were trading at uh, before that SEC lawsuit took place. Let me put this back on the daily for you guys. Uh, today we are posting some losses right now, but if you guys take a look at this, okay, this is XRP on the daily and uh, Saturday we saw significant movement for XRP. Let me just outline that candlestick right there, the big long one. Yesterday was Sunday, uh, another big day for XRP. This morning we hit 75 and a half cents USD and take a look at the volume guys. So this was Saturday's volume, Sunday's volume, and now Monday's volume, February the 1st. And although we are actually technically below uh, the open for today, uh, look at how small that body is and look at how long the wicks and tails are for this candlestick in accordance to what this volume bar looks like. So this volume bar is actually up higher at a higher level. I'm not doing a great job of that, but it's at a higher level than this one on Saturday. And look at the movement that we saw on Saturday. Meanwhile, volume higher than what it was on Saturday. And yet look at the price movement, not nearly as much price movement to the downside. I mean, we did fluctuate up and fluctuate down quite a bit, but ultimately buyers and sellers are still finding a nice equilibrium uh, anywhere between 45 cents and 49 cents. So it doesn't look like it's budging much from that region in there. Actually, let me do a better job of that. Come on. I'm not doing this justice. Okay. <laughs> let me put some horizontal uh, rays there. So anywhere between 45, 49 cents. Uh, right now, that's where XRP is kind of finding its equilibrium, at least on the daily. But this is an interesting story because uh, you guys know the Wall Street bet story by now. The XRP community banding together and uh, trying to pump XRP, although uh, I feel like it missed the mark a little bit. Uh, the pumping started to happen a little early uh, Saturday and Sunday. And then uh, finally, by today, we did see a bit of a pump. I'll put this back on the, uh, we'll put it on the 30 minute just to give you guys a sense here. We did see a bit of a pump at 8.30 a.m., which was when it was supposed to take place uh, in and around here. Actually, I'll put it on the one minute to give you guys a better sense of when 8.30 actually was. 8.30 was here. That was this candlestick uh, in and around here. And so we did, in fact, see this pump here, the green one here, uh, 8.30 a.m., and then sure enough, selling pressure kept bringing this back down. Uh, the question is really going to be now, how much selling pressure is there going to be and are we going to rebound to get out of this? And uh, if we look at it on the daily, so far at least, it's looking uh, not too shabby, but uh, of course that could change at any moment. Uh, I will keep you guys updated as soon as I know more. And this GameStop thing, right? You know, it's just getting crazier and crazier. This one from Michael at Val5 Link. Some small investors who have been blocked from making money on the Robinhood platform apparently still have enough money to hire a pilot to send a message. And I think you guys can read what that message says there. So this brought to us by TMZ, actually. Some small investors who have been blocked from making money on the Robinhood platform apparently still have enough money to hire a pilot to send a message. That's the message. The banner flew in the skies above San Francisco, where the Robinhood headquarters are located. Uh, the message, uh, which is dripping in anger, is an above-earth response to the company's decision to restrict the trading of 50 stocks, including GameStop, AMC, and BlackBerry. And, uh, you know, you can't make Make this stuff up. This is just, this is real life. I can't believe this, but at the same time, I kind of can. Interesting to see that this is happening. And, uh, you know, even with this Robin Hood, uh, or sorry, this GameStop story, this is getting people to think in new ways and uh, more movements are being created around this. I'm wondering if the XRP movement is seriously strong enough to keep this price above where it was uh, before the pump started to occur. Let's not forget that the SEC basically decimated XRP price. So, uh, you know, this, 
was already an artificially um, low XRP price because uh, without the SEC announcement, it is suggested that XRP would have been trading upwards of near $2 at this moment in time. And uh, even at 46 and a half cents, which is what it's trading at right now, is uh, very, very undervalued. Uh, if you guys caught my video this morning, I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner. I talk a little bit about that. Nevertheless, we've still got more updates from the Ripple camp. This from Michael at Val5 links on Twitter. And uh, this is basically their response from January 29th. This article talks a little bit about the pump that we're seeing right now, uh, but also this response from Ripple, and I did comment on this the other day. Ripple responded to the SEC on January 29th with a document claiming that the token is a currency and not a security. XRP functions as a medium of exchange, a virtual currency used today in international and domestic transactions, uh, moving value between jurisdictions and facilitating transactions. It is not a security and the SEC has no authority to regulate it. And so uh, this is what Ripple is claiming here. It's no secret, they've always believed XRP to be a currency, right? That means of transaction, a utility coin, uh, in order to transfer value from point A to point B faster, cheaper, and overall just more efficiently than Bitcoin. The SEC has been breathing down their necks uh, with regards to this and, uh, you know, XRP investors were kind of confused as to why, you know, uh, the SEC was saying Bitcoin, Ethereum, those guys are in the clear, yet XRP uh, is on our chopping block. And it's interesting to see uh, some lawyers within the XRP community uh, coming out and giving their two cents, uh, you know, about how XRP should be classified. I did a video uh, about a few, few weeks ago now, I'll link it up here if I can find it. If you guys still don't know the story, John Deaton was one of those guys and uh, I saw this tweet from him just recently. I read the Ripple answer last night and I'll make a couple of observations later. However, this clip of Vitalik Buterin is more akin to a traditional securities offering than what the SEC is claiming against Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. I'm a big ETH fan, but fair is fair. And so let me play you guys this clip. This is actually Vitalik Buterin talking about how they are going to fund the Ethereum Foundation. Listen to this. Okay, so I'll talk a bit about, about the funding model. So we will have a fundraiser for two months starting February, starting February 1st. It will be available at funds.ethereum.org. So, we'll, so the, the, the part of the initial issuance will be one, 1,000 Ether for one Bitcoin, or up to 2,000 Ether for one Bitcoin if you get in early to compensate for the increased risk. So the issuance model is that we will fundraise, suppose that we hand out X Ether through the fundraiser. Then, then there will be about 0. about 0.5x will be pre-mined, and then 0.4x after that will be mined per year for us. So you see, he's giving a breakdown on how uh, you can purchase Ethereum right at the beginning of the foundation. One Bitcoin for a thousand Ethereum or 2000 Ethereum, depending on when you get into this. And I see John Deaton's point here. This is along the lines of, uh, more along the lines at least, of a security offering than uh, what Ripple was doing with XRP. I'll link a video I did a couple of weeks ago uh, with regards to John Deaton's response uh, to this. It was one of the first responses that we heard within the XRP community. It's a really great video if you guys didn't catch that. Uh, so there's more to this story. Of course, this isn't thwarting uh, other countries and other banks around the world from utilizing Ripple's XRP. I saw this from the Wrath of Kahneman, an article in today's Kuwait Times about the successful launch of KFH's instant cross-border payment service to Turkey using Ripple. Okay, so this was announced back in May. So the Kuwait Financial House has successfully launched instant cross-border payment services to the KFH Turkey using Ripple's technology, the enterprise blockchain solution for global payments. Financial institutions can send payments anywhere instantly, reliably, and cost-effectively by joining Ripple's growing global network, RippleNet. And uh, although this was published uh, way back in May, it does give you a good sense of what's actually going on in the world. And so uh, the partnership, I believe, was announced in May. Uh, this article was indeed from today, February 2021. So thanks so much to the Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. Another one from the Wrath of Kahneman, new Ripple partner Novati, in their fourth quarter report, makes notes of how their customers will have access to other Ripple associates, especially American Express and MoneyGram. So this is another great update from Novati. So Novati's customers will gain access to RippleNet, Ripple's decentralized global financial network that enables the processing of global payments instantly, leveraging XRP, the world's fourth largest digital currency. Novati's customers will also gain access to the hundreds of financial institutions that Ripple already works with, including high profile names such as American Express and MoneyGram. So it's going to be about uh, building out the network and the network becomes more valuable the more it gets built out. Brad Garlinghouse has gone on the record and said this numerous times. The 
more people are using the Ripple network, the better it's going to be, and uh, we're starting to see this worldwide. Of course, the U.S. has been late to the game, still trying to figure out that regulatory clarity uh, that will eventually, hopefully, enable uh, the United States to kind of jump into the 21st century uh, with the rest of the world and start transferring value using blockchain and DLT technologies. So again, this hasn't uh, deterred other countries to uh, utilize RippleNet and XRP. Again, another great post from the Wrath of Kahneman. And uh, then we have XRP in terms of a speculative asset. I saw this from James Rule, XRP community, any KISS fans out there in the audience, Gene Simmons just bought some XRP. Again, guys, you can't make this stuff up. This from Gene Simmons' uh, official Twitter account, not recommending any of these to anyone, but yes, I also bought Dogecoin, XRP, and others. Make of it what you will. Maybe he's just a degenerate gambler. Uh, we don't know that. But you know what? He's posted it. Don't know how much he knows about XRP uh, and Dogecoin for that matter. Nevertheless, very, very interesting to note. Uh, finally, I saw this and I wanted to address this because uh, I noticed something strange as well. DXRon2 here on Twitter. Why isn't XRP trending on Twitter, huh? And it's interesting because uh, yesterday we saw that XRP was trending in uh, Canada from, uh, I believe it was 416 Crypto that brought that to our attention. Uh, and I see over here the XRP community is trending in business and finance. Uh, however, XRP, the simple hashtag, uh, not trending. And uh, I mean, I'm sure there are reasons for this. Uh, I noticed something myself. Uh, the fact that I, I posted this this morning and uh, I was wondering this too. Why isn't this uh, a link highlighted in blue? Uh, nevertheless, I realized in the end that it was because I put the uh, ellipses, the three dots uh, right before the dollar sign XRP that uh, it, it didn't uh, allow it to link uh, to the XRP currency uh, Twitter subcategory. But, uh, you know, I do find it kind of curious. You know, when you, when you scroll through typical... Um, cryptocurrency news outlets, you tend to see them downplay XRP quite a bit. Like uh, that article that I just read you, XRP eases SEC-led drop as supporters pump price over 60 cents. Right, that from Coindesk, and uh, just uh, back to this XRP Crypto Wolf article uh, from Coindesk, you know, when you read the full thing, and I know I didn't read this full thing in this video today, nevertheless, when you do read it, you do get a sense of uh, a very biased opinion from a lot of these news outlets, and it is because... You know, a lot of these uh, outlets originally were started by Bitcoin maximalists. And you know that there already is a story, already is a um, bit of a history with regards to XRP, the XRP community, vis-a-vis uh, -vis cryptocurrency and uh, Bitcoin purists within the uh, cryptocurrency community. So uh, we tend to see that a lot of these news outlets, I guess it depends on who owns them and uh, what their mandate is. We tend to see that a lot of them do downplay this. Even when I was on Cointelegraph, I didn't see any any article here about XRP pumping whatsoever, and yet XRP has been pumping significantly over the last three days. All right, maybe not right now, but even over the last two days, right? You would think that we would see uh, a little more with regards to that, at least on Cointelegraph, or maybe I just missed it. I don't know, I don't see any here just scrolling and, uh, you know, usually you'd see uh, something reported about uh, one of the top pumpers in the crypto space right away at the top page. If I'm missing something, please guys do put it in the comments or uh, tag me on Twitter. And so are these guys downplaying this purposefully? I think within the crypto space, it is very clear that uh, the news outlets that are um, that have a Bitcoin sway to them definitely are. Yeah, what about mainstream media, right? Um, I have a feeling, and I'm just going by memory, that we did hear about Dogecoin being pumped uh, in mainstream media, and yet I don't know if XRP got the same news coverage. If somebody does have a link to a mainstream media article uh, with regard to the current pump of XRP, whether that's CNBC, Bloomberg, something similar to that, uh, please do link it in the comments or uh, please do tag me in a tweet. You can find me at WorkingMoneyCH here on Twitter. So guys, what do you think? Gene Simmons buying XRP and Dogecoin? The price of XRP is still indeed higher, at least uh, as of the recording of this video, than it was before the pump really started getting underway on uh, Friday night, Saturday. Do you think this momentum will last? Do you think the industry is purposely trying to downplay XRP so that you and I panic, take profits off the table sooner than we probably should be? I don't know, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.